feeling refreshed after our fast. I trust everybody has been feeling refreshed and encouraged. Amen. Mm. We're feeling even much stronger to carry <laughs> on Jesus grace for each day. Amen. It's a wonderful yeah. thing that the Lord has made. And let us choose to rejoice and to be glad in this day that he has made. Amen. So um, I'm sharing today on Aaron and Hay. I'm sure you are familiar with these two characters. But if you are not, I'm just going to take you through the characters. And you're going to know who they are. I'm talking about Aaron and Hay. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 17. And I'm reading from verse 8. I'm using the NIV. Are we there? Almost. (laughs) Bring your Bible. Don't just come and sit. Bring your Bible with you. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, we are there. Amen. Amen. Okay, verse 8. The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Now, this was a time when um, these guys were still in the wilderness, right? This was before they got to the promised land. And we know that a lot happened when these people were in the desert. Now, this just before this story, uh, we are told that um, they they didn't have water and they were arguing with Moses, right? They argued so much with him and uh, eventually anyway, the Lord came through for them and there was water that came through after a miracle happened. So now they settled at this place called Rephidim and this is what is happening in this place. So um, the Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim when they settled there. Moses said to Joshua, now Joshua, as you may know, um, was uh, Moses' assistant. When they went to pray, he always um, he was always there and he stayed there at the tent of meeting. He was praying all the time. So he, he was more uh, being mentored by Joshua. So no, sorry, Joshua was being mentored by Moses. So he was Moses assistant. And Moses said to Joshua, choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites tomorrow. Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. Were, were winning. Mm-hmm. Yes, the Amalekites were winning. The other side was winning, right? Mm-hmm. So when Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side, one on the other side, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with a sword. Okay. Then the Lord said to Moses, write this on a scroll as something to be remembered and make sure that Joshua hears it because I will completely blot out the name of Amalek from under heaven. Moses built an altar and called it the Lord is my banner. So the oh. King James. <laughs> Amen. Now it's what he does. Sorry, he. We have Sunday school soon. <laughs> we have baby class, so those babies will go in the baby class, and they can. <laughs> that will be nice. So Moses built an altar and called it, the Lord is my banner. Now the King James Version says, and Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. So if you've heard a lot of people use it, um, use the term Jehovah Nisi, this is what they are saying. It's, it's a, a word in Hebrew. It's actually in Hebrew and it means the Lord is my banner. So a lot of people like to use this script, you know, to use this kind of words in Hebrew when they are praying. Sometimes it's about sounding like you know everything, right? You mm-hmm. want to sound so sophisticated. So you don't just want to say Jehovah is my provider. God is my provider. But you want to use all the big names. Jehovah mm-hmm. Nisi, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shitken, mm-hmm. you know. So mm-hmm. you, you want to pray like that. But really, they are th- these names are also translated for us who speak English. So the uh, Jehovah Nisi is in Hebrew, but for us in English, it is 
the Lord is my banner. I just wanted mm. to speak about this. It's okay to call him Jehovah Nisi. He is your banner. Amen. Amen. But whether whichever one you use, the Hebrew word or the English word, he will still come through for you. So he said, because, because hands were lifted up against the throne of the Lord, the Lord will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. So the Israelites fought many battles. If we follow this, the, you know, what has been happening to them, they fought a lot of battles, right? They, they won some and they lost some. We have seen that. Now, this time around, they went to battle with the Amalekites and Joshua went with them. So Joshua, uh, Moses had said to Joshua, choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. The ERV version says, I will be holding the walking stick God gave me. So in case you are wondering what the staff of God is, it's a stick that the Lord gave to Moses. All right. So Joshua obeyed Moses' instruction. Remember, Joshua was under Moses. He was his assistant. So he obeyed that instruction. And I was thinking to myself that a lot of times, some of us would have thought, oh, you know, why, why is my, vo my boss avoiding going to battle? You know, because Moses <laughs> said, I'm going to go to the mountain. Why am I going to fight? Well, Moses is going to just stand there by, my, there by the mountain top with his friends, with a stick. <laughs> why should I go there? You know, but Joshua was always ready. Remember, he used to pray. He would always stay behind to pray, even when Moses left the tent of meeting. He had been trained and he was ready at all times. So there was no time for him to think about all these things of complaining that why is he mm -hmm. staying behind and I have to go and fight? Why is he just mm -hmm. going to stand by the mountain? He's supposed to come with me. He simply obeyed and went to fight the Amalekites, right? So what mm -hmm. we see here is a battle in the physical and also a battle in the spirit. And I'll explain that. Mm -hmm. The battle was so real, right? Joshua fought a physical battle because he's the one who went to war. He and his men, mm -hmm must have felt very, you know, very tired when they were there. They must have felt hungry. They must have felt thirsty. You know, when you're mm. running and jumping around, it was physical. Mm. But mm. at the same time, they must mm. also have been feeling afraid. When you go to battle, you know, anything can happen, right? Anything mm. can happen when, you, when people go to war. So we see a lot of casualties and it happens all the time when these guys went to war. We saw it in a lot of, um, uh, what is this, stories. So sometimes there's even death. So these people might have been afraid. So just because God with, was with them, it doesn't mean maybe they were not even afraid. So they faced these guys head on. You know how they fought? They would take their spears, they would take their shields and everything, and they would go running towards each other. You're just going straight to just stab each other. That is how it was. So this was a physical, bloody battle. Okay. So mm -hmm. everything that you know about a battle was happening to Joshua when he went to the, to the battlefield. On the other hand, Moses had gone to the mountain. He went to the mountain with Aaron, who was his brother, and Her. Okay, Her, we are told, was their friend. He was a close friend of theirs. That is what I have read here. If you read mm -hmm. further in Exodus 24, Moses left Aaron and Her, you know, in charge of the Israelites. When we, he went up to the mountain to meet up with the Lord, Her and... Um, and Aaron stayed in charge. So these people were very close to Moses and he trusted them. For him to have left the Israelites in charge, you know, under them, it means that he trusted them, right? So as Joshua was fighting the Amalekites, Moses lifted up his hands, mm -hmm. okay? And then when he did this, as long as his hands were lifted up, the battle mm -hmm. was in favor of the Israelites. But when he lowered his hands, the mm -hmm. battle was in favor of the Amalekites. So the opposition was winning. That is what was happening. So mm -hmm. what Moses was doing was connected to what Joshua was doing. Joshua was doing the physical fight, right? Mm -hmm. Both mm -hmm. of them were in a fight, even though they were in different places. Joshua was on mm -hmm. the battlefield and mm -hmm. um, Moses was on the mountain. But what mm -hmm. they were doing was mm -hmm. connected. They were mm -hmm. both mm -hmm. fighting, right? Mm -hmm. Joshua was doing the physical fight. Moses was supporting spiritually are we seeing the picture yeah amen so eventually moses grew tired and he needed support i can only mm -hmm. imagine how joshua felt because he was mm -hmm. the one who was also in the in the mm -hmm. in the physical fight but the one mm -hmm. who was standing there with the staff in his hand with hands lifted up 
grew tired. Mm. This is what we are told. And he needed support. So the two mm. men he was with, Aaron and Hay, remember he had gone up with them, noticed that, mm. hey, Moses is getting tired. His hands are going mm. down. So, you know, and he was old, remember. As you mm. know, every time mm. his hands go down, the team is losing. What shall mm. we do? Mm. What are we supposed mm. to do here? So they mm. gave Moses a chair, um, a stone to sit on. Okay, mm. they supported him by giving him a stone to sit on. They also supported his hands, right? One mm. supported his uh, one side and the other one supported the other one so that he wouldn't drop them. So as I was going through, I was being reminded that we all fight battles in life. Mm. If you are not fighting yeah. a battle right now, you fought before or you will fight one. That mm. is how life is, right? So your fight could be a financial battle, okay? It could be a, something at the office. You could mm. be fighting, you know, something with your health. It could be your relationship, mm. your marriage. It could be your siblings. You know, it could be your children. It could be anything. There are different kinds of battles. But mm. each one of us will go through this. Sometimes it's a battle of the mind where mm. somebody just thinks people around me don't care and everything else. It's a battle. So mm. there's always a battle happening somewhere. We need people around us during such times. Amen. Amen. So yeah. whichever battle mm. you are fighting, you will feel like Joshua on the battlefield because mm. what's happening is so real. Joshua was doing the physical fight. So it's not all the time that everything is spiritual. Sometimes these things mm. are going to mm. manifest and you mm. will fight them. Mm. You will feel the pain like Amen. Joshua. Amen. So those Amen. guys perhaps were even being stabbed and you know they were stoned mm. and all those mm. things. They, they were bleeding, right? Mm, they were bleeding. Mm. They had cuts on them. They were bruised. The battle was real. So you mm. may be afraid to lose your job. Remember, I said the people who went on the battlefield with Joshua might have been feeling afraid because they knew mm. they were facing this giant in front of them. They're facing these people. Mm. They're fighting physically. So even for yourself, because the battle that you fight is real, it has manifested, mm. you will mm. feel physical mm. pain, you are going to, to be afraid, right? So mm. you might be afraid to lose your job. You might be afraid to mm. lose your life. You might be afraid to lose your property. You remember financial battles, they have a lot mm. of issues. You're afraid somebody will knock in and evict you. You're afraid that somebody will knock and get your car. You are afraid that that friend you borrowed money from will come and get your children. I don't know if they <laughs> still do that, but you are just afraid even to lose your marriage or your child, right? So the experience mm. is so real. You feel the pressure from the enemy on the battlefield. This is what Joshua ex was experiencing. And this is what we get to experience when we are fighting our battles. Is that right? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So Joshua experienced that with his men. Even th God, even though God was there, remember how God loved, loved the Israelites. He was always there. When they made a mistake, he would punish them. But he always withdrew the, the, the punishment from them. He always mm. supported them. He always protected, protected them. So even though God was with them, they still experienced some physical challenges, which I just explained, yeah. right? Mm. So even though God is with us, we will go through certain challenges. We will experience the pain. There is some impact in our lives when we fight our battles. Amen. Mm. I'm reminded Amen. of the scripture which says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, right? Mm. So even mm. when we fight, there's an impact, even if it is spiritual, the impact is felt somewhere. So this is what happened to them. The battle was real. So I was mm. thinking to myself as I was preparing this, uh, I had this question in my mind. Do you have anyone praying with you when you're in trouble remember i said mm. when you're going through a situation you need people around you right at times we want to be by ourselves but it's necessary to have somebody to stand with you so moses was part of the battle that joshua was fighting right even though he didn't get to the place where joshua was he was in the fight with him that's why he had to lift his hands right and then um when the hands were lifted they were winning when the hands were lowered they were losing it because there was a connection. That's why I'm saying you need somebody to be around you. You need somebody to stand with you. So when you have mm -hmm. someone praying for you, you will excel, okay? When you're mm -hmm. alone, most of the time, 
Yes, you can pray alone, you can fight alone, but sometimes when you have backup, you're going to experience something different as well. You begin mm. to feel strengthened. Sometimes you're not even aware that somebody is praying for you at a particular time, but you mm. just say, oh, today I'm feeling much better. But people are really praying for you, right? You will mm. excel. You won't be fighting alone. So we need a support system. Amen. We are children of God, but we still need a support system. Do you have anyone who can stand in prayer for you as you fight? Joshua mm. was in the battlefield. Moses was there with his stick holding up. And what about you? What situation are you going through today? Is there somebody praying with you? Some, mm. Is there somebody lifting up their hands to the Lord and interceding for you? Mm. Or are you just sitting by yourself? What I see here is that even the intercessor can get tired and mm. they also need support. So there's an issue of you on the battlefield. There's an issue of somebody supporting you, but that person also... Uh, can get tired. So I would look at us here and the people that we pray for. We are praying for our households every day, for the people that come for the prayer meeting. We are standing yeah. and we are praying for our households, but we can also get tired. That is what it means, right? Mm -hmm. So Moses' hands grew tired and he needed support. Okay. That's mm -hmm. why Aaron and her were there. Now, when you're an intercessor, by intercessor, it simply means a person who prays for another person. Don't mm. refuse to be helped just mm. because you pray. Amen. What I'm saying here, don't just be sitting there and telling yourself, no, me, I pray, I'll pray for myself. I prayed for that person, so I'll just pray for myself. Even an intercessor will need help at some time, at some point in time. Even I would need help. I would need somebody to stand with me and pray with me. Amen. Mm, yeah. So children of God can be funny at times. They can reject support from people around them, even when they need it. That is how mm. children of God are, you know, <laughs> they like mm. saying, no, the Lord will make a way, you know, mm. brethren, don't do, but the Lord, but the Lord has sent help for you mm. <laughs> and you deny people will mm. come to you and ask if you need help. Do you need help? No. Oh, no, no, by God's grace, I'm fine. Mm. No, no. If you are not fine, you mm. need help. Even if you're an intercessor, mm. you know, a lot of times people would always mm. say, no, by God's grace, I'm fine. Just admit I'm not fine. I need help. Okay. Mm. Let's not hide behind that. You need mm. help sometimes. So Moses would have told Aaron and hey that he didn't need the stone to sit on, right? Mm. Remember Moses used to go and talk to God. He was talking yeah. to God face to face, right? Mm. Mm. So he would have told Aaron and hey, guys, just leave me alone. In the game, if you, in the game. Mm. Okay, I have come this far. You've seen me walking. Am I not the one who was going to Pharaoh to negotiate mm. for you? And mm. to, now you want to tell me to sit down. Mm. You mm. see, so, but Moses did not do any of those things he just accepted that look i am tired now and mm. he sat down he accepted that he needed to be assisted and he sat down right so let Amen. us not you know uh, pretend that we don't need help even as we come to pray mm. amen mm. amen so and when they mm. supported him with his hands he didn't stop them either remember it was a matter of sitting his whole body mm. was tired mm. right mm. but also it was an issue of prayer so even in prayer there are a lot of people who would say oh francine i'm so tired i have prayed every prayer i have mm. prayed and i think i'm tired and i'm letting this situation go i'll just sit mm. right but what i'm saying <laughs> here is when we look at at, at um, moses moses was lifting up his hands right and mm. when you drop them they were the guy other the guys were losing so imagine if he just said ah, i'm tired and he just mm. let them the hands drop then the other guys mm. were going to lose so he didn't mm. stop them because he knew he needed support in that aspect so even mm. for you mm. when you're being asked you know if somebody comes to mm. pray with you don't stop them right okay mm. what we see most people do mm. is switch off phones when they need help, they'll switch off their phone. They'll stop everyone from visiting them. They are busy. They are, they are not reachable. They just mm. reject all the help that is coming to them. That is how children of God behave. And I don't understand. You need support when you are going through any situation. Do not decline. Allow people to love you. Amen. Mm. Allow people to be there for you. Allow people to pray with you. Amen. Amen. Mm. The battle can be won when people come and support you. Otherwise, mm. you just get so tired and you can give up. Amen. Yeah. 
So mm -hmm. this is why, because if, if Moses did not accept the help from her and Aaron, trust me, they were going to lose that battle because Moses was going to mm -hmm. even collapse right there he, because he was tired of standing and then he was going to drop the arms. They were going to lose. That's basically mm -hmm. what I'm saying. If you reject help, you might end up losing. Okay. Amen. Then on the other hand, you can look at it from this angle. If it's not you going through a situation, then be the Aaron or the hair to somebody mm -hmm. else. There's mm -hmm. always somebody in need of assistance. There's always somebody in need of that support system, right? So support mm -hmm. someone going through a hard time. Go and uplift them. Sometimes you don't even need to go to their homes. Just pray mm. for people. Intercede. Mm. Mm. When you see mm. somebody's having mm. a hard time, don't phone and mm. say, I'm praying for you. You don't need mm -hmm. to do that. Just be the head, just be the arrow on, by, their, mm. by, by their side. Just continue praying for them. Intercede for mm. them. When you are you know, listening to people talk, they, they're complaining about certain things. Begin to pray for them. Include mm, them mm, on your prayer mm, list. That is how mm. you begin to, to be a support system for people. Don't mm. just think about yourself. You also mm. think about other people who have mm. trouble. They need the support. Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. So looking at Moses, he had a relationship with God. And I'm looking at you right now. I know you have a relationship with God, right? But mm. there will be times where you will feel very tired, extremely tired, right? Mm. Just because Moses was having, um, uh, was a friend of God, it didn't stop him, or rather he used to have conversations with God. It didn't stop him from feeling exhausted. Mm. So it, it, you want, um, just because you have a relationship with God, it won't stop you also from feeling tired, you know, emotionally, spiritually, and also physically. So mm. there may come a time where your situation is so heavy and you feel like giving up, just like I was saying mm. earlier. A lot of people mm. have given up. You've seen people who used to be so zealous of the Lord, but look mm. at them today. They've given up because their situation did not turn around. They just said, ah, na fideka fiyinef. You know, I'm, I'm just going to leave all these things. I'll just throw in the mm. towel. I'll just live my life. And they stop. So today I would like to encourage you that, you know, God has sent people around you to support mm. you. Whatever mm. situation you are going through, mm. they are people around you mm. who can support you. They are there to support you. Be willing mm. to be helped. Make mm. it Amen. easy for them to help you. Do not reject when people come to you. When they see you struggling. So if they phone you today, how are you doing? Um, can I pray with you? Don't pretend. Accept the help. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Accept Amen. that you need the extra support. Don't push them away. Otherwise, they will leave and you will sink. Mm, mm. Amen. Amen. So this was my encouragement today. Let us be like her and Aaron to other people. But when other people come to us as Aaron and her, let us recognize the people that God is sending into our lives because situations mm. will always, always arise. It's not mm. all the time that we have, you know, a happy time. Everything is fine. Mm -hmm. A lot of times things go wrong. Sometimes mm. it may be that you don't even have food, but because you are too proud, somebody wants to come and help you. You decline mm. because you're thinking they'll start talking about you. Nobody cares about these things when we mm. mature we don't care we just mm. we're happy to help mm. nobody's mm. even going to talk about you so mm. my my encouragement today mm. really is to, uh, to 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 everybody accept the help when you need help okay amen. otherwise mm. be the help to somebody who is in mm. need of help mm. amen amen amen, mm. amen and amen mm. very simple mm. very easy let us look you know do an introspection where do we need help do we need help financially? Do we need help spiritually? Do we need help emotionally? Don't allow your mind to be a battlefield because that is what the enemy likes. As long as, as soon as your mind becomes a battlefield, the enemy comes in and is going to take over your life and you're going to see yourself being torn apart. You don't even know what will happen to you. But mm. allow people to help you. Open up your heart. Let people help you. But remember here, Aaron was Moses' brother. And hair was also close to them. So I'm not saying mm. you're going to open up to just anybody that comes. You're not just going mm. to go to Facebook and put up your complaint and everybody mm. starts writing to you. Oh, no, no, no. no. You're mm. going to end up with wrong information. Mm. Mm. So it has to be people you can trust. Okay. Mm. It has mm. to be somebody you know you can trust. You know, somebody you know has got your interest at heart. Amen. Mm. 
So it is not just anybody that you're going to open up your heart to. But when we pray, the Lord will draw those people, the right people to us. Mm -hmm. When we pray, mm -hmm. the right mm -hmm. people will be available to us. Amen. 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 That is what I know about God. That is how mm -hmm. he sends help mm -hmm. from 